What's up, YouTube? My name is Brock Ashby. I'm an online personal trainer and body transformation coach based in Sydney, Australia, coaching people all over the world online and even face to face here in my gym, helping to kind of prevent the BS fitness industry from taking over. And today I'm going to be continuing from a previous video, answering the most asked questions in Google. I've done the first five, but this is the top five most asked questions on Google for fitness. And make sure you stick around to the end to find out what the most asked question is on Google. Let's jump in. Can I lose weight without exercise? 2300 monthly searches. Yes, you can. Once again, if you want to go for that terminally ill look. So we want to have training. We want to be lifting weights because that prevents our, our muscle mass from deteriorating. Now, this isn't just to look aesthetic. This isn't just to look amazing and look like an Instagram influencer and get that hot profile pic. It's not about that. Training is also about being functional, being mobile. It's about increasing your muscle, sorry, increasing your bone density because that sort of stuff, increasing your bone density helps you to, to be more uh, functional as you get older. So there's something called sarcopenia which happens. And with sarcopenia, that's the muscle degradation as you age. Now, if you don't lift and you just lose weight, okay, you may improve your health by losing weight, but you also reduce your bone density. And then if you have no bone density as you get older, if you fall, the damage is a lot greater than someone who has lifted weights and is a bit more robust. So it's not just about looking better, but it's also about being around for longer. Um, but there's also research that shows that when you lift weights, it does help you sustain your weight off and improve your health even further. So I want you to get out of this way of thinking of like lifting weights is just for gym bros. It's also for parents. It's also for grandparents. It doesn't have to be lifting heavy bench presses. It could be doing body weight squats, body weight split squats. Your resistance training should meet you at a level that you're at. It shouldn't exceed it. It should take you on a journey. Yes, you should be striving to improve. But if you just start lifting weights and you're 50 or 60 or 70, start where you're at and just improve from there. You can lose weight without exercise, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend adding in exercise as well because it will improve your health even further than just losing weight. The next question, quite annoying. How do I get a six pack? 3,600 monthly searches. That's a big jump from 2,300. I'm just losing weight without exercise. So let's just be quick. So once again, the six pack is not really a metric of health. I have a six pack. That doesn't mean I'm healthier than someone that has a flat stomach. It's just, there's just lines on my stomach. It's just this. Like, I was thinking about this on my drive here too. Back in the day, if someone had had abs and we were all cave cave women and cavemen, that guy was probably going to die earlier than everyone else. Like it's <laughs> like he's just hungrier, he's just leaner. Okay, he may have been active, he may have been a hunter, he may have been quite strong, all this stuff. But you just have a lower body fat than other people. So I just kind of want to let you see it what it is. You just have less body fat than another person. If your body fat isn't that high that it's getting in the way of your health, it's healthy. Having a six pack could actually be unhealthy if you're too lean and trying to sustain it in an unhealthy way, like a lot of fitness influencers do, that won't tell you. So how do we get it? We need to be lean enough to see it. It does help if you have abs that are strong and that are built through ab training as well to pop. So you can do kneeling ab crunches, you can do hanging gar hammer raises, hanging leg raises, decline knee raises. There's a ton of things that you could do, dead bugs, planks, dumbbell drags, there are a million exercises that you could be doing. Um, but the main thing that you need to overcome is getting lean enough to see it, then getting uh, abs big enough to pop. And then lastly, a point on ab training is treat them like every other muscle group. So a lot of people when they do abs, they kind of get their mat, they lay it down and they're like eh, eh, in the corner, just doing crunches. Yeah. If that's you, I want you to feel a bit shamed from that because it's not good. For our chest, we don't just go in the corner and do like little push-ups like eh, eh. We do chest press machine. We do dumbbell chest press. We do barbell bench press. We do cable crossover flies. We do deep range of motion push-ups. These are things that we need to be trying to do for abs as well. We want to be training them like any other muscle group, not just doing pitiful stuff on the floor. Kneeling cable crunches are really good because you can increase the weight as you go and actually track it with progressive overload. 
Hanging gar hammer raises are really good because you're taking out the hip flexors and you're working your abs directly. Now, if you're just doing crunches, it's an okay place to start if you're a beginner. But one day, you're going to get to 30 crunches and be like, well, that wasn't very hard. So then, like, what do you do from there? Do you go to 40? Do you go to 50? Do you go to 60? No one wants to do 60 crunches. Do weighted exercises if you can. Even those cable crunch machines in the gym where you're going like that because you can increase the weight and you can track it down in your program like progressive overload. If you are going to do body weight exercises, make sure when you get to around 15 to 20 reps of that, you find a way to make it harder. So if you're doing hanging knee raises, you can go to hanging leg raises. If you go to hanging leg raises, you can go to hanging gar hammer raises. If you can't go all the way there, you can go to decline gar hammer raises. Obviously, you have to have enough knowledge to kind of know how to level yourself up with ab training, but there are ways, and I want you to continue to try and progress it as opposed to just sitting around and doing um, stuff on the ground and just flopping around and trying to do ab work. All right. What are the best foods for weight loss? 4,300 monthly surges. There are no best foods for weight loss. We don't eat blueberries and get shredded. We don't eat chicken breast and get shredded. But there are principles that we want to follow. So here they are. One, two, three, four, five, six. High micronutrient density, high fiber, and low calorie. Whoops, that was three, but it was all one point. <laughs> Fire the PowerPoint guy. Um, so, so we want foods that are high micronutrient density, so that you're getting a lot of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, all that good stuff in the amount of food that you're having. High fiber as well, because it fills you up. And that is what trips a lot of people up for, for, uh, for fat loss is they're not full. So they end up binging and kind of giving up on their diet and low calories so that we can help create that calorie deficit. So if you can get high micronutrient density, high fiber and low calorie foods, those are wins. And that just happens to be things like blueberries, raspberries, spinach, kale, broccoli, green beans, mushrooms, these types of things that you don't really want to eat that we should eat because we're adults. Those are the things that we want to do. Now, this is a real, I put this second because I kind of wanted to, to kind of punch you in the face. It's not a very cool thing. So this is low palatability, <laughs> which means it doesn't taste that good. And there is a strategy to it. Now, if you have food that doesn't taste amazing, you don't really want to eat much of it. So I'm not saying that you need to go and eat chicken breast boiled and have nothing on it. But I think if you kind of chill out on the sauces, chill out on the gravies and the mayos and things like that, you're probably going, well, first of all, it's less calories, but it's also going to be less palatable. It's not going to be as enjoyable. And as much as that sucks, that's actually going to help you reduce the amount of food that you're going to eat. So... I kind of just do like a bit of salt. I'm a shitty chef anyway. Like there's no denying that. But I'll just have like rice and meat and then like microwave vegetables and everything's pretty bland. I'll just salt and pepper it. And then I just obliterate it with uh, zero sugar ketchup <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm, I'm not saying you have to do that, but low palatability is a strategy to help you eat less. It's not fun, but it's kind of that adult thing to do. Number three, high protein foods because they keep you full. High protein foods are very satiating. Uh, low fat, uh, number four, low fat variants of food. So low fat variants of food are just kind of like low fat milk, low fat yogurt and things like that. So you can still have the foods that you love, but if you have low fat variants, low fat versions, they aren't the same. They don't taste exactly the same. Obviously they're not as nice, but they do help you to eat those foods and still continue on your fat loss journey. Number five, low sugar foods. And that can just be like, um, you know, zero sugar kind of fizzy drinks. Actually, that's the next point. But like low sugar foods are kind of like sauces. Like uh, like I said, ketchup, zero sugar ketchup, zero sugar mustard. You can get low sugar or low fat mayos and things like that. It's not that good. But these are options to help you increase uh, the foods that you eat and also lower uh, the amounts of calories that you have. And my last point was zero sugar fizzy drinks. So there was a study that was, <laughs> it's kind of bummed a few people out that said that actually drinking that stuff over water is actually better for fat loss. And that kind of came down to your, you kind of feel like you're drinking fizzy, but you're not necessarily having the calories that go with it. And it kind of satisfies that kind of sweet tooth as well. So if you just have water, yes, it does quench your thirst. It's probably better for you than drinking Coke Zero all the time. 
but you don't get that satisfaction of having something sweet or something in it. If you have Coke Zero, Pepsi Max, uh, Sprite Zero, all these types of things, if you have that, that can also satisfy that type of um, food that you would have. Like maybe you would have a cheesecake or an ice cream or have a dessert. If you have the uh, zero sugar fizzy drink, that might prevent that from happening. Okay, last two questions and then we're going to wrap it up. What exercise burns the most belly fat? 6,400 monthly searches. Can you see how the questions are getting stupider <laughs> as we get to the top? Okay, so let's identify this. We don't burn belly fat, we just burn fat overall. So the way that I like to explain this is if you were to have a swimming pool and you got a bucket and you took it out of the right side of the pool and emptied it, the whole pool would go down, not the right side of the pool. That's not how it works. And it's the same thing with our body fat. When we're doing exercises and creating a calorie deficit and losing weight, we don't lose weight in certain areas. Although genetically we store fat in different areas, it's important that we understand uh, that we have those genetic kind of displays. Like, like my fat stores more so in my glutes, in my hamstrings, in my quads, in my lower body, and less on my stomach and my chest and my arms. That's why I look relatively lean even when I'm not that lean. My upper body doesn't store much body fat, but my legs do. So if you give me a set of pants, I'm good. But some people will store more fat in their chest, um, on their back, on their sides, on their belly, on their arms, stuff like that. So we have that, that kind of genetic place that we store our body fat, but we can control how much overall fat that we have. So what exercise burns the most belly fat? There is uh, different uh, exercises. It's, it's not really like, you know, one exercise doesn't do much. So if you're doing ab training, um, that is not going to take fat away from your abs. It's going to help your abs increase in muscle mass or get stronger, but it's not going to lose fat in that area. That's something that we have to understand. This is how we burn calories. We have our basal metabolic rate, which is around 60 to 70%. We have um, our NEATS levels, which is around 20 to 30% or 15 to 30%, uh, which is like our walking and our fidgeting, uh, our touching our hair, our getting up and going to the bathroom, going back. That's our NEAT level. We have our thermic effect of food, which is around, uh, it can be like 5 to 10%. If you have a higher protein diet, more fiber, it's going to be a bit higher. And then we have our EAT, which is our exercise activity thermogenesis, which is just how much we train. So that is how we burn calories. So what exercise burns the most belly fat? There isn't an exercise that does that. But if we increase our BMR, which is like we increase how much we weigh, really that's the only way to increase our BMR, that would increase how much uh, how many calories we burn and would help burn the most belly fat. Um, and if we increase our NEAT, we walk more, we fidget more, we move around, we increase our physical levels of activity, then that's going to help us burn more calories. So we can almost be better off being more physically active than uh, for weight loss than trying to do certain exercises to lose belly fat. It's just, it just doesn't really happen. Lastly, what is the best way to lose weight? That was 13,000 monthly searches. So pretty much double uh, of what exercise burns the most belly fat. And that is the, so to answer this question, it's the most sustainable way for you. You can run, you can play badminton, you can play ping pong, whatever you want to do. That's going to be the best way to lose weight because it's an avenue that you're going to continue to do. Now you can lose weight by doing certain things, but if you're not going to stick to it, it's not going to last. Once again, you're going to go from showing up, training five days a week, four, three, two, one, Netflix. That's how it goes. The gym and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is what I do to help me lose weight. That's just what I enjoy. I'm going to show up to the gym. I love training. I would train even if I didn't get more muscular or more strong, just because I enjoy it. It's awesome. And Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I love that as well. Yours could be dancing. It could be anything, but whatever you choose to do, make sure it's sustainable for you because then you're going to be able to show up continually. Um, you know, obviously there are certain attributes that you get from doing certain things like, so from lifting weights, 
I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to get more muscular if I'm doing everything correctly. From Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'm going to have good awareness. I'm going to have good coordination. I'm also learning a martial art. I'm learning a skill. I'm going to get that stuff. If you're doing dancing, you're going to get this and that. If you're doing ping pong, then you're going to get better with hand eye coordination. You're going to be really light on your feet. You're going to be agile. So think of that as well. So the thing that you're going to pursue, and it can change as well, the thing that you're going to pursue for fat loss. Make sure that you know what you're signing up for in terms of attributes and the kind of lifestyle that you're going to get and physical, um, yeah, attributes that you're going to get from doing that sport. This was a very long video. <laughs> I just spat all over the mic. <laughs> this is a very long video. The 10 most uh, asked Google questions for fitness. If you liked this video, there's going to be one over here that was similar to this. And I'll see you in the next video.